How do we prove to a Muslim that the Bible is from God? By using the Quran. <laughs> it's God. It's God. Y'all know how we have to start this off, right? Let's roll the rhetoric. You see, the Quran recognizes that the original Torah and the original Gospel are sacred books, but these books have been corrupted. Okay, Bible has been corrupted. All right, uh, Dr. Shabir Ali, you're up, sir. The obvious um, thought of Muslims is that the original must have been a Muslim text or a text that is compatible with Muslim theology, but the present state of the text is not. Uh, wait, hold on a second. D did he just say that the originals were a Muslim text? Well, that would mean that the Torah and the Gospel are the words of Allah, right? Well, then what does the Quran say about the words of Allah? In chapter 6, verse 115 of the Quran, it says that no one, none, is able to change his words. It also says in chapter 18, verse 27, that no man can change the words of Allah. None can change his words. So, let's do the math. If the Torah and the Gospel were originally a Muslim text, meaning that they were the words of Allah, and according to the Quran, none of Allah's words can be changed, no man can change his words. That means that the Torah and the Gospel couldn't have been changed. It's pretty clear, right? But these books have been corrupted. Uh, no, the Quran is very clear about what it says. But these books have been corrupted. <laughs> Again, uh, the Quran says that it cannot be changed. Allah's words, not mine. But these books have been corrupted. Okay, you know what? Forget it, forget it. All right, let's just, uh, let's see what we're going to do here. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and grab this right here, man, and pull this up. Yeah, yeah, I like that right, right here. That's perfect. Yep. Y'all see it. So, it's very clear, the Torah and the Gospel couldn't have been changed because none can change the words of Allah. Well then, I can hear you guys right now in the comments saying, well, good logic, you've got it all wrong, yeah? You've got it all wrong. What it's talking about in the context, it's talking about the Quran, yeah? It's talking about none can change the words of Allah in the Quran, not about your Bible. Astaghfirullah. Here's the thing. I understand the context. I understand that the Quran is mentioned, but it makes a blanket statement. It doesn't say that none can change the words of Allah in the Quran. It says that none can change his words, period, point blank. It's a blanket statement. There's no way around it. So the Torah, the Gospel, and the Quran all fit under the umbrella of Allah's words. Sorry, not sorry. So here's the thing. Not only does the Quran say that the words of Allah cannot be changed, meaning that the Torah and the Gospel couldn't have been changed, but it also all over the place confirms and affirms the Torah and the Gospel that I have in my hands today. Yes, I said it, in my hands today. For example, in chapter 3, verse 3 of the Quran, it talks about how the Quran was sent down as a confirmation of what came before it. And it also talks about how the Torah and the Gospel were sent down aforetime as a guidance for mankind. And so this is all over the place. The Quran is a confirmation of the Torah and the Gospel. That was sent down from Allah. And then it also goes so far as to say that it confirms what is with them. Chapter 2, verse 89 of the Quran, it says that the Quran confirms what is with the Jews and the Christians. Chapter 2, verse 91 of the Quran, it says that it is a confirmation of what is with them. Baina yadehi, in between their hands. So according to Allah, the Torah and the Gospel is in the possession of the Jews and the Christians. Just a few more verses I can quote. Chapter 4, verse 47. They are to believe in what Allah has sent down, confirming what is with them. It's, it's right there in their possession. If the Torah and the Gospel has been corrupted, then here's my question. Why in the world is Allah confirming corrupted books? 
Why is Allah confirming distorted scriptures? Did he not know that the Torah and the gospel were, were corrupted by the time Muhammad hopped on the scene? Or, or maybe the Torah and the gospel were corrupted after Muhammad hopped on the scene? So then the Quran will be affirming what the Torah and the gospel says at his time in his possession. Maybe you're saying that it's corrupted after. Well, bad luck to you. We have Dead Sea Scrolls. We have manuscripts that date hundreds and thousands of years before Muhammad came on the scene. So either way, it's an Islamic dilemma. Thank you, David Wood. Moreover, the Quran is very clear about how the Jews and the Christians are to handle their own scriptures. In fact, they are supposed to uphold their scriptures. The Quran says in uh, chapter 5, verse 68, that they have nothing to stand on unless they uphold, unless they observe the Torah and the gospel and all that has been sent down to them from their Lord. The Quran over and over affirms, reaffirming, reaffirming and confirming the Torah and the gospel. And one of the clearest verses of this is chapter 7, verse 157, where it says that the Jews and the Christians will find Muhammad written in our scriptures. We will find his description written in our scriptures. Wait, 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 wait. What you mean to say, Allah, is that we will find Muhammad in the distorted scriptures? In the uncorrupted parts, maybe. I don't know. It depends on what Muslim you're talking to that day. So is Muhammad found in the corrupted scriptures? How does that make sense? Unless Allah was of the mindset, really Muhammad, that the Torah and the gospel during the time of Muhammad was perfectly preserved, perfectly standing, perfectly lawful to use, and in fact was credible for the prophethood of Muhammad. In fact, the Quran says to Muhammad, chapter 10, verse 94, if you are in doubt, go ask the people of the book. Go ask the people who were reading the scriptures before you. That's what Allah says Muhammad should do if he's doubting what Allah is telling him. Why? Why refer to people who are reading corrupted scriptures? Or better yet, why refer to people who all do not have possession of the Torah and the gospel? It's gone. It's lost. It's not there. <laughs> How can they uphold something that doesn't exist? How can they believe in something that doesn't exist? You guys see it, right? That the Quran is a confirmation of the Torah and the gospel. None of Allah's words can be changed. And that we will find Muhammad written in our scriptures. We stand on nothing unless we uphold our scriptures. But here's something else, a nice little jewel. Chapter 5, verse 43 of the Quran. This is in response to the comments that I already hear. Well, you're supposed to follow the Quran now, good logic. You're not supposed to believe in what is in the Torah and the Gospel now because the new revelation has come down. You don't need the Torah and the Gospel anymore. Thanks to Muhammad alhamdulillah. That's not what the Quran says. According to the Quran, chapter 5, verse 43, reading on down to 48. 43 says, why do they come to you? Talking about the Jews. Why do they come to you, Muhammad, when they have the Torah in which my law is in? Why do they come to you when they have the Torah? And then reading on down, it talks about how the Torah was revealed and how it was, how the scribes and the, the, uh, the leaders were supposed to protect it and preserve it, how Allah trusted them to do it. And so in the time of Muhammad, Allah is saying they don't need to come to you. They have the Torah, which, I, which my law resides in. Then he goes on to talk about the people of the scripture. Let the people of the gospel, chapter 5, verse 47 Judge by what is revealed therein. Judge by what Allah has revealed therein in the gospel. Clear cut. I am supposed to, as a Christian, judge by the gospel that is with me in my hands. So how can you say that the Torah and the gospel are corrupted? And this is 
really what is mind boggling to me. Because if you read the next verse, it talks about addressing the Muslims, how Allah sent down the Quran as a confirmation of the previous scriptures and as a Muhammad of the previous scriptures, a guardian, not a criterion, not a supreme authority, but Muhammad, guardian of the previous scriptures, right? And how Allah has prescribed to each of us a law. He prescribed the Jews the Torah. He prescribed the Christians the gospel. And he prescribed the Muslims the Quran. And if Allah wanted to, he would have made us all one people. But each person has their own law, and that law is good enough for these people to judge by. So all in all, the Torah was sent down, the gospel was sent down by Allah, and the Quran confirms these scriptures. These were a guidance for mankind. We are supposed to judge and uphold the Torah and the gospel. It is with us in our possession. And if we don't, we are among the losers. This is all in the Quran. This is what Allah says. And interestingly enough, when we read chapter 3, verse 55 of the Quran, it says something very interesting. It says how Allah will make the followers of Jesus uppermost. It'll make them uppermost above the disbelievers. And then we have this promise fulfilled by Allah. In chapter 61, verse 14, it says, O believers, be you God's helpers as Jesus, Mary's son, said to the apostles, who will be my helpers unto God? The apostles said, we will be helpers of God. And a party of the children of Israel believed and a party disbelieved. And so we confirmed those who believe against their enemy and they became uppermost. So this is my question to my Muslim friends watching this. Which believers of Jesus, which followers of Jesus did Allah help and make them uppermost against the disbelievers until the judgment day? What followers of Jesus reign supreme has lasted from the first century all the way up until now and has been on top above the disbelievers till this day and all the way till judgment day? What was the message of these followers? What message, what gospel did they preach from the first century all the way up until now and that they will be preaching all the way until Judgment Day that Allah has helped and made them rulers above their enemies? And that's a cut. Oh my God! Logic.